So all the T-series use a super battery build kit. All the odd letters like G and B or anything weird like that, like A, would be flat back. In this video, I'm going to go over all of the TDO4 rebuild kit variations so that you know which one you need and you pick the right rebuild kit for your needs. As time goes on, more and more variations of these rebuild kits come out. So I want to make sure that I introduce you to all of them that are available today so that you pick out the correct kit that you need. Now, I want to go over some of the modern day examples as well as older examples. The TDO4 series goes as far back as the early 90s, which they were commonly found on the 3000 GT and Dodge Stealth. Those came with what they call a 9B, and it was, takes a flat back rebuild kit. Now, if you want to upgrade those and go with different comp compressor wheel combinations, then you can convert those over to use a super back rebuild kit, which uses a super back compressor wheel to match. For modern cars, now you have an example of a TDO4 in reverse, which is first introduced that I'm aware of on the SRT4. That was a TDO4 LR. They use a directional thrust bearing that spins in reverse, that is reverse rotation, so it's set up so it won't fail when it's spinning that in that direction. I'll explain that when I show you the thrust bearing. Now, there's also the BMW with the N20 motor. That has a reverse TDO4 HLR turbo, which uses the same rebuild kit. Those are both super back rebuild kits. There's also a T SRT4 caliber, but it's not the same as the SRT4 Neon. The SRT4 Neon uses a reverse rotation rebuild kit. The SRT4 caliber uses a forward rotation rebuild kit. The SRT4 caliber has a 20T and the Neon, I don't know what that turbo is called, but it was really small. I just remember it's TDO4 LR and there's very limited upgrade options for them, which I mentioned in a previous video, which was called, I think SRT4 turbo upgrade options or something along those lines. And I just told you, get rid of that turbo and put a stage three manifold on it and use an Evo 9 turbo or a stage three turbo. So now I'm going to give you the close-up look on the different TDO4 turbo rebuild kits. This is the TDO4 Superback turbo rebuild kit. This, what defines it as a Superback is that it has this concave seal plate. And it also has to match this collar. or Yeah, this collar. So the collar is shorter for the concave Superback plate. The compressor wheel has a concave back on it that mates into, flows into the, the seal plate and touches the collar only without touching this seal plate. Now, if you wanna convert over this rebuild kit to work with the RB Turbo Rebuild Kit, it's as simple as doing this. Now you have an RB Turbo Rebuild Kit. The difference is that the compressor housing O-ring works with the TDO3 compressor housing. Everything else is TDO4. I will also link to all the rebuild kits that I have available for these in the description box so you can get the rebuild kit that you need. Now on the right is a flatback turbo rebuild kit. This was first introduced on the 9B on the Dodge Stealth or 3000 GT. What makes it different is that this is flat, the compressor wheel is also flat, and this collar is taller than the super back one. The difference is that, see the super back where it's concave, it's shorter because it's, the compressor wheel is extended to reach down into the seal plate. On the flat back, the collar is extended to reach up to the compressor wheel. For the different thrust bearings, there are different bearings out there. I've had the best luck out of these, these copper bar ones. These are machined from a solid piece. Other thrust bearings out there, there's a lot of cheap ones. Uh, some of them that cause a lot of problems would be the steel one is the one that's the worst. That's just this piece, but it's just completely steel 
and it overheats and causes a big mess inside the turbo. I made a video on that topic. It was called Upgraded Rebuild Kit versus Genuine Rebuild Kit. I think I had some information in there about it. And the OEM, uh, the OEM thrust bearing, there is some issues that you can have out of that, but it's only when you start to run high boost. So if you don't plan to run like 20 pounds or more, you'd probably be okay on the OEM bearing. But if you start to run a lot of boost, then you're going to want to upgrade to the upgraded thrust bearing. We only offer this bearing just because we've always had the best of luck with this bearing and there's no sense in offering anything else that just doesn't work. The difference in the collars for the upgraded and the non-upgraded, the non-upgraded are on the bottom, the upgraded are on the top. The upgraded have a 14 millimeter surface area that is placed up against the thrust bearing for in increased durability. Another rebuild kit that I want to introduce you to is called a TFO 35. That is this rebuild kit but with different size journal bearings. The inside diameter of the TDO4 journal bearings is 7.51 millimeter and the TFO 35 journal bearings is 7.0 millimeter on the inside diameter. So that's the only difference in the TDO4 and the TFO 35. I think the TFO 35 is commonly found in Superback. I don't know if there is a flatback version. If you do have a flatback version, I can make a special rebuild kit just for your needs. But I do have a TFO 35 rebuild kit listed available. The next ones I want to go over, I have a whole sheet here so you know what is the difference in 12T, 13T, and all the G series. So all the T series use a super back rebuild kit. All the odd letters like G and B or anything weird like that, like A, would be flat back. That's the easiest way to know which rebuild kit you need. If you have a 12T, it's going to take a super back. If you have a 13G or a 15G or a 9B, you're going to have a flat back rebuild kit. Now the classification of TDO4, TDO4L, H, HL, those are all classifications of the turbine shaft sizes. TFO35 is a classification of the turbine shaft size, but it also classifies the different size journal bearings. Now the TFO35, you can take the shaft out and you can upgrade the shaft to a TDO4, L, HL, or an H. If you machine the turbine housing to accept that turbine wheel, and then you use TDO4 journal bearings to match the shaft, because the outside diameter of the bearings is the same. For the Hexon TDO4 series, they use a special set of TDO3 bearings. The outside diameter is the same as TDO3, the rear is a little bit longer than the front bearing and the inside diameter is an odd size which is designed for a custom turbine shaft which I also had made. So I have both of these bearings and the turbine shaft. If you need those as replacement parts, you can check out my eBay store. I do have those available. This one on the top is the rear bearing and the bottom one is the front bearing. You can see I had this, this bearing revised so that you wouldn't have issues with it. I felt like there was a common flaw with them, so I went ahead and had the side of it trimmed so that the width of the bearing matches the bearing seat. I think this is an earlier Hexon variation. I would not consider this TDO4, but I do want to mention it because Hexon probably has them listed as TDO4. This turbine wheel is a special size turbine wheel which takes special size thrust collar and spacer and special size journal bearings. The only thing TDO4 about this is that it has a bigger compressor wheel that is, I think, a 16T. Now for the journal bearings, it's an odd size but the outside diameter is TDO3. The collar and spacer is just an odd size altogether, but it does use a TDO3 front seal and it uses a TDO3 rear seal. 
So that is just a completely odd size hexon variation that I've seen and I had never seen one of these before. It's the first one, so I had custom bearings made for these, but I had not made the collar and spacer. They look to be in good shape, so I'm gonna try not to have to get those remade just because it's taking gonna take way too much time to rebuild a turbo like this. Here's the difference in rotations of the thrust bearing. The way that you tell is by which is the low side. The low side's on the left if you're going in reverse. Now this is only looking at the back of the bearing because if you think in terms of looking at the front of the bearing, the answer of, of low side is on the left is completely opposite. You have to think in terms of if you're looking at the turbo, this would be the front of the compressor wheel. The compressor wheel sits on top of this part of the, well it sits on top of this side of the thrust bearing. So this one, you have to think it would be, the wheel would be going in this rotation clockwise. So the oil is going to go up and over the ramp and up and over the ramp. On the back side, or for the reverse rotation, let's say that you're going to go in clockwise. Well, that oil is going to, it's going to get trapped right under the ramp rather than gliding on it like it should. So it's going to go left on this one. So this one's going to be the reverse rotation. This one's going to be the forward rotation. Now also, this thrust bearing is not made correctly. This one is. And the reason why is because a reverse rotation thrust bearing always has the dowel on the right side. But because this one was made incorrectly, I have to drill a hole over here to make it work. I'm having this completely redesigned just because I hate doing this and it's a complete waste of time. Now, I just want to show you what has to be done to change the rotation on these. So, if the hole must move over, you can put it right here. But really, this needs to be in the opposite side, too. To make the hole over here. If you've seen some thrust bearings, some have a hole on each side, but it's never upgraded. They can't upgrade it because they don't have enough room to put the second oil hole. So I'll post all the links in the description box to all the rebuild kits that I have put together for you so that you can get the correct rebuild kit that you need. Just to recap, I'll go ahead and mention all the rebuild kits that I went over in this video. TDO4, TFO35, super back, flat back, reverse rotation TDO4L, and reverse rotation TDO4HL, which use the same rebuild kit. And then I also went over the RB turbo rebuild kit. And that was all of them I can think of off the, oh yeah, Hexon variations. There's two of those. So I went over all the variations that I'm aware of at this point in time that are out there so I put together kits for you to be able to rebuild these turbos. I know some of them are super rare and like the TDO4 for the Hexon, that rare one, that's technically TDO3. I'm still waiting on parts for that. So if you need something that's rare, you're just going to have to email me and you'll probably be on a waiting list if I don't have it. 